<sighs> Welcome to the channel. Today I'm about to check out film theory. Paw Patrol is darker than you think. Thing is, I got a little bro. He just be watching this is just because. Hold up, let me get my comfort pillow. Um, and me as a kid, like not even kid boy, I would see this ish play, and I wouldn't really. I mean, I guess I would get it. It's just dogs who have human jobs, I guess. And I wonder how you could make this dark. Is it gonna be on some pet labor or some shit? The dude's name was like Ryder, right? And then. No jobs too big, no pops too small. Paw Patrol, you're on a roll. Any Paw Patrol, uh oh, oh, oh. I don't know. That's just I uh, remember how it went. Uh, I didn't watch a lot of episodes as a youngin, but I do not. I don't even remember one dog's name. Sheesh! I I wonder how this man is gonna do this. So yeah. So with that said, uh, let's hop into it. Um, film theory, this shit is darker than you think. Uh, you know, after a hard day of theorizing, it's good to just kick back and watch some Paw Patrol with my son. No deeper meanings to analyze, just a fun-loving show about puppies. So simple, so wholesome. Oh, hold on, are, are these are these puppies dead? Oh, it's happening again! Hey! Are they dead? Bro, I got a little bro, and he be watching it, and I just be there, and I don't for Are they dead? Hello, Bones. internet. Welcome, Welcome to, to Film Theory. Theory. Ruining your childhood since 2014. But you know what? I'm not content to just ruining your childhood. Oh, no. I've got my sights set on your children's childhoods, Nasty. too. Today, we're breaking new ground by looking at shows that the kids are into these days. And by kids, I mean the three-year-olds. Specifically, my son, Oliver. Yep, it's mm -hmm. another installment in my kid. Oh, shit. Oh, my, my little bro, like, what, four? Is he four or five years? No, no, he's, no, he's going to turn five this year. I don't know. Whatever. This and now you have to suffer through the consequences. My three-year-old is programming a 10 million subscriber YouTube channel without even realizing it. They just grow up so fast. <laughs> now, admittedly, I actually really like this show. The Paw Patrol is a team of six puppies led by a 10-year-old boy named Ryder. Each yep. pup has a specific set of skills based on emergency services. There's Chase the police yep, officer. Chase, dog, I'm, okay, Marshall, I know that name. Marshall, Sky, Rumble, Mer the Asian dog, Rumble just... the construction pup, nope. Zuma for water rescue, and Rocky for garbage <laughs> yep. collection. Every once in a while you have a special guest dog make an appearance like Everest the mountain pup or Liberty the city pup but for like 90% of episodes this is our core team and yeah. from there each episode is pretty formulaic they're hanging out in the city of Adventure Bay there's some disaster like a windmill breaks or someone gets stuck in a cave the Paw Patrol are called to action they suit up we hear this line ready for action riders sir there's yep. a mission brief they slide down and load up That's into their true. specially designed pup mobiles <laughs> and through some combination of skills the day is saved and a lesson is learned. Usually the lesson for me is that a shocking amount of problems can be solved using a winch. I'll need you to use your winch. Chase, I'll need you and your winch. I yep. need your winch. Get your winch out, Chase. Also, the more you watch, the more it becomes clear that they had no idea what to do with some of these pups. Marshall with his fire rescue equipment, total MVP. Rubble with his construction tools, best boy. Zuma <laughs> the water dog, meanwhile. Yeah, you can sit this one out, Yeah, what, yeah, what you finna do, bro? And the next one. You, you know what, just, just pose for the lunch. Box. To be honest, <laughs> this is one of the more bearable kids shows out there because it's self-aware and uses uh. the formula for some really solid jokes. Like here, when aliens come to visit Adventure Bay, a whole can of worms I feel like I should probably unpack at some point, but not today, it slides down the lookout tower and launches into its vehicle like the pups do in each and every episode. Only here, because the formula demands it, it also gets its name shouted out. Alien! Alien. Then you got stuff like this. When construction dog Rubble gets trapped, the only one available to drive his rig is Zuma. Me? We need his truck to move the rest of the rocks once we get him out. Zuma, uh, on the double. And he just proceeds to fail. Zuma is just the butt of all jokes. Sure, the yeah. whole thing is designed around some very obvious merchandising opportunities, but just look how cool this thing is. Bro. We gotta get one uh, for Ollie. <clears throat> yeah, uh, sure, my guy. We gotta get one for Ollie. But hey, at least the show is aware of this fact. Officially what? licensed Paw Patrol merchandise? This stuff sells like hotcakes. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> that right, Chase? <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> Now, the show 
already comes prepackaged with a lot of really obvious questions. How come the dogs aren't the only animals that can talk? Why doesn't Adventure Bay have a normal police force or fire department? When is Katie finally gonna admit that she has a crush on her? <laughs> the last one might just be me, but it is so obvious that they would make a total power cut. I mean, oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one, one, one to say. I'm not one to say. Really stood out to me. A moment in season one that caught my attention is just a little bit weird, and it prompted me to dig deeper. And oh boy, did that start leading me down the darkest possible path for this universe. One that convinced me beyond a reasonable doubt that the Paw Patrol is dead. And not in just a, oh, this was a dream route or anything like that. I'm saying that within the canon of the show, Paw Patrol members have died and actively been replaced. So strap in, all you good pups, because this one is going to be a I mean, it's like, if you think about it, you know, if you remove the fucking, um... Child mentality, child show elements out of it, you'd be like, yeah, no surprise. But then if you put it in, it's like, life happens, yes, but why can't life happen in a kid's show? Why is it like when people die and it's connected to a kid's show, it's darker than what it is. But if we remove the child shit, child essence out of it, like if you remove it from a child show and for example, just put it on a fucking... Like Netflix, I mean, it's like movie from Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, all of that, and just put like on some shit like that. In fact, increase the rating. Now all of a sudden, it's just okay. But it's just weird. If it's a kid show, it just seems dark for some reason. I don't really get that. Right now, as soon as you say people died, I just got chills. But then I just thought of other shows that are the same. Why don't I get? Rocky Ride. You know? Ready for action, Rider, sir, because Matt Pat is on the case. So the moment that got me to start digging deeper was from Season 1, Episode 9A. Pups get a rubble. Where we learn about how Rubble the construction pup came to join the Paw Patrol. Now, this is actually one of the very few origin stories that we get for any of the pups. The only other one that we see is for Chase in the Paw Patrol movie, which I'll come back to later. In this episode, we learn that Rubble was actually the last member of the team to join. Basically, he was a stray puppy that needed to be saved. After the Paw Patrol rescues him, he winds up tagging along on their next mission to rescue a snowboarder trapped on a snowy mountain. When Ryder's shovel can't dig up the snow, baby Rubble steps in to save the day. That bravery winds up earning him a spot on the team. He receives his signature pup tag, hard hat, and construction vehicle. Okay. Look closer at what happens in the episode. Ryder calls the pups to the lookout for the mission briefing, which he does all the time. But check out the big screen. Do you notice the pup tags along the bottom? Fire is Marshall. The star represents Chase and the police force. Recycling is Rocky. The propeller is Sky. Okay. The anchor is Zuma. But seriously, for as little as it's used, it might as well not be there. And of course, the wrench is for Rubble. But... This is the first time that we've met Rubble. He was literally just saved by the team less than an hour ago, but he has a dog tag on the screen? A tag that he won't get until proving his worth at the end of the episode. His yellow segment is also already on Ryder's pup pad. How could it be there if they don't have a construction pup yet? The only way that this makes sense is if there was a construction pup prior to Rubble. Now, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this is an animation error or something, but the evidence proving that there was a pup prior to Rubble really starts to add up once you look for it. At the end of the episode, we see Ryder give Rubble his construction helmet, but if you look closely at the helmet, it has scrapes on it as though it's been used. This isn't a brand new helmet for a brand new- what I'm saying, bro? I'm fucking getting chills right now, like, oh shit, somebody did die and he got replaced by a different pup, but at the same time, bro, this shit happens. People die. People have to move on, and someone has to do the fucking job. Just because it's a kid's show doesn't make it any more impactful than it should be. But I still get those chills! new profession within the Paw Patrol, this helmet used to be the last construction pup's helmet. Rubble is also given the construction rig, which also has wear and tear on the front of the bulldozer portion. See that paint wearing away? Again, it's been used It's before. been used, More yeah. More noteworthy, though, is the fact that Rubble's too small for the vehicle. And Ryder explicitly says that he's gonna need to grow first before he can truly reach the wheel. You have a little bit of growing to do before you can reach the steering wheel, but you'll get there. All the other pups have vehicles that fit them perfectly. In fact, when other new pups join the Paw Patrol, like Everest, Tracker, and Liberty, their gear fits them perfectly the first time. So Ryder is clearly capable of making gear that fits Rubble when he's small, but he doesn't. Why? It must be some sort of hand-me-down. He already had the equipment from the last construction pup available. Why make a whole new vehicle if there's a perfectly good one sitting there waiting to be used? And again, if you think I'm looking too far into this, here is the definitive proof that I'm right. You'll notice that each vehicle is numbered. Ryder's ATV is 
one because he's the leader. Chase is two, Marshall three, Sky four, Rocky five, Rubble six, and Zuma seven. But did you notice a problem with that? We know out of these pups that Rubble is the last to join the team because during his story we see all the rest of the team. Oh, and his pup mobile numbered six. Zuma. Seven. This is proof that there was a puppy before, yeah, before. Rubble doing his job. The numbers do not lie. Zuma being number seven proves it. Hey, would you look at that? Zuma is finally useful for something. The more you look, the more evidence you start to see of a former Paw Patrol. One that's no longer with us. One that no one speaks of. In Season 1, Episode 6B, Marshall attempts to break the record for the fastest fire pup. The implication here is that some dog held the record before him. But yeah. what other fire pups exist in this world? No municipality outside of Adventure Bay really seems to use anything similar to a Paw Patrol. In the Paw Patrol movie, for instance, we start off with a semi-truck driving off a bridge. When Captain Turbot mentions the Paw Patrol, the truck driver has no idea what he's talking about. He's in shock when a puppy comes to rescue him. Call the police! Call the fire department! Call everybody! <laughs> You're in Adventure Bay. Here, we call the Paw Patrol. You gotta call the who? <laughs> Same thing happens at nearby Adventure City when the news actively reports on the arrival of the pups. Guardians, heroes, cute little dogs in adorable outfits. Whatever you call them, the Paw Patrol were here to save the city. The idea of a team of rescue dogs just isn't a normalized thing in this universe, which suggests that there was a marshal before Marshall to be the record-setting fire pup. In fact, take a look at the fastest fire pup trophy. It looks exactly like Marshall's fire engine, except Marshall doesn't have the record. Same vehicle, different pup, just like we saw with Rubble. But that's when you start to notice a really disturbing trend. All the pups are stray dogs. They're sad, they're scared scared and they're alone then and only then are they enlisted by Ryder. We just covered Rubble's origin story where he's a baby puppy in danger, but the same actually holds true for Chase the police dog. In fact, that's pretty much the main plot of the Paw Patrol movie. Chase's origin story is that he's a puppy that was abandoned on the street by his owners. He's almost hit by an oncoming car when suddenly he's rescued by Ryder and recruited onto the team. I know. You saw me and took pity on me. Not at all. I chose you because you were the bravest pup I'd ever seen. Later that same movie, Liberty is added to the team. Another stray dog that we see roaming the streets begging for food. How's the fruit business, Tony? Well, it'd be better if I wasn't always giving you free fruit. In fact, looking across pretty much every origin story that we have for new members onto the team, it's always the same. A lone dog with no connections and no home is enlisted to be a Paw Patrol member. Mountain Dog Everest, Jungle Dog Tracker, yep, they're the exact same way. I can't wait to meet them. It gets kind of lonely sometimes. Are you going to stay around here? It would be great to have a friend nearby. I'd like to make you an official member of the Paw Patrol. Ryder collects abandoned, stray, and orphan dogs to add to his team. Why? Well, here's where it all starts to come together. The missing pups, the new additions to the team, they're all expendable. That's why it's a rescue team made of dogs. Ryder doesn't use the pups for rescues because they're best suited for the task. He's using them because the risk of losing a human life is too great. And having puppies perform the rescues means minimum human casualties. If a dog... Hey, now, nah, nah, this is where the trail should be hitting because this is... Yo! Yo! Bro! Ryder! No! But it's at this. No! Eyes trying to save someone from a house fire or a rock slide, they can be replaced. We actually do see this in real life with avalanche rescue dogs. When an avalanche occurs, dogs are sent out to search for anyone buried under the snow to dig them out. Unfortunately, this means that in some cases, dogs might be hit by the avalanche and not survive. But this also means that in the process, they've spared the lives of any humans that would have attempted the rescue instead. And who could be more expendable than lone stray dogs with no home wandering the streets. I chose you because you were the bravest pup I'd ever seen. No, Ryder. Be honest with yourself. You chose him because he was there. Because he was unwanted and no one would miss him. In success, he becomes a top-tier rescuer. In failure, he's just another forgotten puppy that would have died on the streets anyway. And if he dies in the line of duty, well then he's celebrated as a fallen hero. He's the goodest of boys. And if there is any doubt that these dogs are in danger, just watch the show. The situations get perilous. In the movie alone, they're doing rescues at the top of collapsing buildings. A building, we're told, is the 
tallest one in the world. And in the show, sure, some episodes are like, hey, we just saved a frog, or hey, we brought your school lunch back to you in time. But sometimes you have stakes where dogs are hanging on by their teeth from out of control hot air balloons. So how does any of this benefit Ryder? Well, financially, the cost must be far less than employing several police officers, builders, and lifeguards. The dogs are given treats as their payment at the end of each mission. Meanwhile, Ryder gets to keep all the cash for himself. No wonder he always reminds people, no job is too big, no pup is too small. It's business. Of course they'll accept any job. The dogs really can't say no. And sure, Ryder attributes all the team's wealth to the merch, but government contracts tend to pay even better. This 10-year-old is literally part of the military industrial complex. And now, he's expanding the operation. He's finding dogs in new cities and setting up Paw Patrol outposts around yeah, my the world. Dragons, right? The Paw Patrol will always look out for Adventure City. In fact, the Paw Patrol movie shows characters from the TV show actively commenting on the fact that only now is the Paw Patrol becoming more well-known. And to think, I knew them before they were famous. It's a billion-dollar business built on the backs of puppies. Pups that are expendable. Pups that are following in the paw prints of other pups that came before them. Ones that died in the line of duty and have been swept away by history. That is the dark secret of the Paw Patrol. Whenever you need a hand, just yelp for help. The ones who should really be yelping are the dogs. Yelp, Chase. Yelp, Rubble. In this series, you're the ones who are in the biggest trouble. You just don't realize it. You know, I might not end up talking to Ollie about this theory. At least for a while. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Chase. Chase. I mean, Ryder. Ryder. I can't tell a kid about this, though. Your son will see this when he's older. I'm going to talk about it, though. Shit, I might even make a short about it, though. My question to you is, how do you sit down and watch Paw Patrol with your son and think, hmm, hey, what if they died? And uh, uh, What is your thought process? At, at what point, when did you start seeing this? Like, my question to uh, Matt, is it, is it Matt, Matt, Pat? I'm, I'm probably... When you flopped from the beginning, like the first episode, which episode did that like start to kick in? Like, hmm, what if they're dead? When did this theory actually begin to formulate inside your brain? Damn, bro, I've never thought of that. Like, I never. Now. <laughs> you have officially ruined a show that I was, that almost became a fucking childhood show, but I just didn't care enough for it, which is not becoming my brother's childhood show. Now, anytime I watch that shit, this shit's gonna be like, oh, fuck you, Ryder type ish. Damn, this. Is this the only film theory video that I've reacted to slash watched that got me feeling this much chills? This is a kid show. Like, my point still stands at the beginning, but then the moment he got deeper into this shit, that's when shit started getting hard. Damn, boy. I don't even know how people can take it. But shit got deep, boy. He really made it hard on y'all to, like, to be able to watch the show now. Nasty. Nasty, sheesh. Fuck, is, the, is there another one that he dropped? Another fucking film theory that he did? An another, yeah. I don't know. If if it's something I can... Oh, yeah, it's that Morbius one. But the thing is, I'll have to first watch Morbius before I can actually react to it. But if y'all want me to watch Morbius now, I, I can. And then... I'll react to it now. The, like the first yes, watch Mobius, do a review or whatever, or just, or just say yes, and then if I'm gonna do a review, I'll do it. I see the memes, 
I get the memes, but I haven't watched the movie. But sheesh. Um, let me just stop it right here, bro. If you enjoyed the reaction, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know which other theory you want me to check out. I'm going to do so. So with that said, I'm um. I'm going to see y'all later.